Buffalo, Wyoming is a quaint, friendly, and historical little town at the base of the east side of the beautiful Bighorn Mountains. And there's authentic buildings, museums, and lots of public art. That doesn't even include the outdoor adventures that you can have there. And it seems like people come there from all around the world. Fans of the books and TV show Longmire trek to stand in the places that inspired them, even though the series was entirely filmed in New Mexico. We invite you to come along as we explore the town's history, camp at the beautiful Lake De Smet, and join our friend Mark Guido of Grand Adventures on a refreshing hike in the nearby Bighorn Mountains. I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. What's happening? The next stop on our journey is Buffalo, Wyoming, which sits along the Cloud Peak Scenic Byway in the foothills of the Bighorn Mountains. It's located almost halfway between Mount Rushmore in South Dakota to the east and Yellowstone National Park in western Wyoming. From Wild West Wars to beautiful outdoor activities, we're pretty excited to get started exploring this area. But first, we have to set up camp for the week. Our campground location this week is at Scenic Lake DeSmet, 10 miles north of Buffalo, Wyoming. We were surprised with how large it is from our first impression when we saw it from the interstate and it got even better the closer we got to its recreation areas. The entrance to the county-owned Mike Selpott's recreation area is marked with an actual paddle wheeler on a hilltop, although we never found out why. Lake DeSmit Campground does not take reservations. They have 60 dry camp spots for $15 a night and eight with electricity for 20 per night. There is no potable water or dump station here. We chose a large spot with hookups since the temperatures had been on the high side during our trip, but some of the dry camp spots had fantastic views. So this spot's completely isolated. Up here at the top of a bluff, the end of the road. There's an inlet there to the lake. So keep in mind that the spots that are $15 that have no hookups, people are going to be running their generators, especially in the summer. So even though that spot was so nice and isolated, you're going to hear that noise. We heard it down that way too. Somebody's had their generator running since we got here, which we probably would too. Yeah, that one boat's been out there for a few hours, but that's the only one on the water as we approach Labor Day weekend. It's in the low 80s. We are on the Thursday before Labor Day, recognizing that the peace and quiet and only one boat out on this huge lake is about to end. <laughs> With a maximum depth of 120 feet, Lake Desmet is a great summer place to enjoy boating and other water sports, fishing, swimming in its clear water, and bird watching.
What's happening? You putting two and two together? Go <laughs> see. Beware, there are legends describing a Loch Ness type creature in the lake and of ghostly encounters. Downtown Buffalo is listed by the U.S. Department of the Interior on their National Register of Historic Districts. Its main street has more than a dozen historic buildings. We stopped into the treasure chest, antique, and collectible shop that featured all sorts of gently used western wear, decor, and even instruments. The owner, Cece, was on hand, and we enjoyed learning about why she loves this little town. If you go there, you might catch an in-store performance from visiting musicians trying out the instrument collection. We also checked out the Bucking Buffalo. It's an enticing shop filled with beautiful western apparel and gifts. They have a great selection of items featuring the books and series Longmire, which takes place in a fictional named town that is based on Buffalo. This is why the town hosts Longmire Days each July, the celebration of all things Longmire. Author Craig Johnson lives near Buffalo in Johnson County, which is why he chose this as the location. He uses the names of existing shops and places in his books, but he renamed the town Durant and changed Johnson County to Absaroka County. However, none of it is filmed in Buffalo or even in Wyoming. It's all filmed in northeastern New Mexico, but that doesn't stop thousands of people flocking here for Longmire Days to watch the parade and enjoy festivities, including talks with the author and stars of the hit series. One of the joys of the RV lifestyle is crossing paths with other mobile friends. And wouldn't you know, we once again find ourselves in close proximity to our good friends from the YouTube channel Grand Adventure, Mark and Pat. Turns out they were camped at the base of the Bighorn Mountains just outside of Buffalo. We arranged to meet up at their boondocking site and do some hiking in the Cloud Peak Wilderness area. We were joined by other friends of theirs as well as the Guido's Chocolate Lab, the always lovable Zoe. Because Mrs. Grand Adventure chose to hike with us, Zoe did a great job of making sure we were still coming as well as to get a drink of water. Mark waits for us to catch up and then he's gone again. Zoe's run up and down the hill several times because she wanted water. Okay, Mark's, Mark's yelling that there's lakes right ahead. But so we kept coming back. Look at all these perfect Christmas trees. You gonna walk with me? All right, go find Dad. She's okay. How you doing? Fine. Now what is that sound? They don't. They're not. Oh, this right here. Once we uh, pull the hoses off. So, whoops. That did it. She's not going to survive. There we go. It's community. Pat says we're into the gated community now. Wow. 
No call if you need it. Yeah, exactly. Look at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, this is a bent and, and twisted well tree. Moved. I know. So they're easy to mold and bend. And so. That's pretty cool. So cool. When we go back, I'm probably going to do it. Zoe, she's in her element. Zoe is a huge lover of bodies of water and playing fetch. Combine the two, and this energetic canine is in paradise. So, Mark took us up to this lake. We got a little lost on the way. He didn't. He walks fast. He was way ahead of us. But Zoe found the lake way before. She just plumbled herself right into the water. So that's where she's been the whole time, but now we're going back, but isn't it beautiful? We hiked all the way up into the Bighorn Mountains and we hiked here with somebody. Yeah, um, good friend, uh, him and a few other people. Um, Mark Guido from Grand Adventure, we did a, did a hike with him today. But we're still here in the wilderness. Mark's long gone. He's back at the campsite. <laughs> He's eating, drinking a beer, having a good time, and we're still on the uh, trail. Yeah, that's Mark. After the hike, we all headed down to Buffalo's historical Occidental Hotel Saloon. We enjoyed some good food and drink and conversation before we parted company to see each other again down the road. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're gonna use that in our video. <laughs> The Occidental is where author Owen Wister was inspired by the cowboys and gunslingers he observed while staying here to write his 1902 novel, The Virginian, which many consider the first Western novel, which went on to become a movie and a TV series. Founded in 1880, the Occidental Hotel quickly became one of the most renowned hotels in Wyoming. Among those who enjoyed the hospitality of the Occidental in the early days were Buffalo Bill Cody, Ernest Hemingway, Teddy Roosevelt, President Herbert Hoover, and Calamity Jane, who drove freight wagons on the Bozeman Trail. Even Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid rode to the Occidental from their hideout at nearby Hole in the Wall. The hotel's restoration was completed in 2007. The owners at the time discovered much of the original building's ceilings and floors were hidden under layers of carpet and wood. Original furnishings were found tucked away in storage areas as well. The beautiful embossed ceilings you see over your head in the lobby and in the saloon are the original ceilings. The magnificent back bar in the saloon is the original, brought in by wagon over a hundred years ago and many of the chairs you will sit on are likely to be antiques original to the hotel. Even the bullet holes that you'll see in the saloon are original. Buffalo's downtown murals reflect the local culture and history. Public art is all around here, from statues to murals, making Wyoming's heritage seem larger than life. This gives the public square and area where Clear Creek runs through it both sophistication and comfort making you want to stay a while. This statue is on the corner of North Main and Fort Streets, which is the location of the Jim Gatchell Memorial Museum. Jim Gatchell came to Buffalo in 1900 to establish a drugstore on Buffalo's Main Street. He not only served the settlers and frontiersmen of the area, 
but became a trusted friend to the members of the Lakota and Northern Cheyenne in the area. They start by going down to the basement. On these old steps, you can hear how old they are. Couldn't sneak around the house back in the day, could you? Because of these friendships on both sides of the frontier struggle, Gatchel frequently was given gifts and accumulated a collection of artifacts in the storeroom of his drugstore. From guns to medicine bags, bow and arrows to clothing, those gifts are now inside this museum and tell Jim's amazing story. Johnson County opened the museum in 1957 with his family's donation of his collection. Since then, other people have continued to donate items as well, bringing the museum's total holdings to over 40,000 artifacts. There are over 80 firearms in my collection, and as you can see, they are prominently displayed on my walls. Hmm. This one is a 40 caliber 1859 Sharps. This exhibit of what was once the world's largest free public swimming pool let us know that it's still here in Buffalo and still open, but no longer free. On our next episode, we'll be visiting the city Sheridan and also heading up to Wyoming's Bighorn Mountains for a hike and some beautiful scenery. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this visit to Buffalo, Wyoming, don't forget to head over and hit that thumbs up button as it really makes a difference for our channel. We put links in the video description for more information about the places shown in this episode. And there's also links for products and services we use and recommend. And when you use those links, we might get a small commission and it's a great way at no additional cost to you to help support Roaming with Rosie. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button in the corner of this video. And do click that bell because that way you'll be notified each time we upload a new episode. And we love hearing from you, so make sure to leave a comment. That way you could be part of the conversation. Until next time. See ya. We'll see ya.